Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this series we're going to create a cool little quiz app that you can use for mobile devices or PC depending on your preference or both if you want to. So we'll be designing and building a fully fledged quiz app using a couple of different aspects within Unity itself. We are bring in a couple of other things as well to make it more interactive. So the first question is, how much knowledge do you already have of Unity? If it's a lot, you'll find this series very easy. If it is absolutely no knowledge at all, don't worry because we'll be going from a very, very simple level up to, I'd say, an intermediate level in both design and programming. So we'll be able to put this on mobile devices um, and, like I say, PC as well. So everything you create within Unity can be ported to any supported device, whether that's an Android device. PC, Mac, Linux, Apple devices, you can do it all inside Unity as long as it is supported, even consoles. So it is designed with you, the viewer, in mind. And the great thing is, as I said earlier, you don't need any prior knowledge in Unity or programming to get started with this series. I will be teaching it all to you step by step. So like I said, the aim is to get from absolute beginners to some kind of intermediate level. And throughout the series, if you want to see anything in particular, just drop a comment below in one of the videos. Or if you're watching this in the full version, just still drop a comment in the video if you want to. So all programming will be done with C Sharp. Finally, before we get into it, this series will work in all versions of Unity as long as you're using something from at least 2015. And I realize that's a long time ago now, but some menus may look a little different if you're using a version different to me, but essentially everything will still function the same. So currently as of recording this series, I'm using version 2020. By the time you see this, 21 could be out, 22 could be out. You might feel more comfortable working on 2018 or something like that. But either way, it will function pretty much the same. So let's get to grips with what we have here. Now, if you install Unity for the first time, you will more than likely install something called the Unity Hub. And that is this window that we have right in front of us. And we have four little options here. The two that we're going to be using in this tutorial is the installs and projects. So if you click on installs and don't see anything here at all, you would need to click on add and it will give you a list of the latest official releases as well as pre-releases. And you can see here the latest official release for me is 2020.2. The latest pre-release is 2021.1. I would generally recommend avoiding pre-releases simply because they could be filled with bugs, they could cause issues or things like that. The official releases are the ones that have been tested and are going to be the most stable ones to use. I would recommend using at least 2018. I, although I did say something from 2015, for example, Unity 5, I would ultimately recommend 2018 to 2020 at this point. Obviously, new versions come out all the time, uh, but everything will still function as normal. So once you have selected whatever version you want to install and clicked next, you'll be able to add the modules. So these modules represent what platforms you can um, build to. So for example, we want to build for iOS or we want to build for UWP or we want to build for Android. Just make sure they are selected. Then click done and it may take a little bit of time but it will install on your machine and you'll end up with one of these little windows right here. Next thing we need to do is create a new project. So if we go to the projects, you can see I already have many, many projects here. All we need to do is click the arrow on new and select whatever platform you want to build for. So in this case, we have this little window pop up right here. Project name, obviously call the project whatever you want to call it, quiz app, whatever. Select the location, and you can also select the template. Now the template just basically defines whatever render engine we're using. So for example, there are three render engines within Unity currently. There is the 3D, there is HDRP, and URP. The URP also used to be known as LWRP. We're going to be using 3D because we're not going for anything quite strenuous here. Um, there's no point delving into the HDRP, which is the high definition render pipeline, just simply because th there's no use for it in what we're creating. Now, we are going to go in 3D with this because we are going to use the 3D environment a little later on in this series. We're not going to do this entirely in 2D. Although most of the project will be in 2D, we are going to deal with 3D as well. So once you have 3D selected, 
click on create, everything should disappear and you'll be presented with something that looks a little bit like this. This is the default layout of Unity. It will look familiar to some people who have used various other uh, aspects. Maybe you've used CryEngine, maybe you've used uh, Blender, 3D Studio Max. It will look somewhat familiar. So we're going to go through each section here and a quick rundown of what it's for, what it does, and how it will be used in this series. So over here we have the hierarchy. The hierarchy is a great way of storing items with a name. So for example, I can select the main camera or directional light and you'll see them highlight over here in the scene. Basically, a way of putting the hierarchy is saying it's a list of all our objects in the scene. What is the scene? The scene is where we store all those objects visually and as you can see, if I select the directional light, we can see there it is. There is not a physical representation of every single object in the scene view. For example, like say, camera, light, we don't physically see them but we know they are there. If I were to double click on directional light, we would kind of focus on that a little bit. And to get more perspective on that, we can use the mouse wheel to zoom in, zoom out. And if we use the left mouse button, we can click on objects inside the scene, like so. If we hold down the right mouse button, we can pan around like so. We could also use the directional keys on the keyboard to move around as well. So you get your fingers quick and nimble and everything. You can actually just whiz around in the scene view quite quick. It may take a little bit of practice and getting used to, but once you're used to it and how you can operate inside the scene view, you can actually do things real quick. So moving on, we next have the game view. The game view is a way of seeing and playing the game that we have built in the scene view. So for example, if we had created a little scene with a guy that's running and we can control him, we would press play up here and we'd be able to physically play that inside the Unity engine. Next, we have the animator. Now the animator is not going to be important right now. It's basically a way of, you could think of it as a way of containing all of animations that are relatable to one object. So if we had a cube that had an animation where it spins around, you would end up storing the animation inside here, the animator. Over here, we have the inspector panel. So if I click the main camera, you'll see that we have all of these details up here. Each object will have at least one component. And you can see here that these are known as components. So the camera is a component, transform is a component, and we can also add components if we need to as well. You see a massive list of different components to add. A component is basically a way of feeding information to any object. So for example, if we had a cube that had a collider, it would have a collider component. And we could tell it how big that collider was, how small it was, whether it would be a trigger or not. But I did say each one has at least one component. And that one component is the transform component. Each object has to have a physical position somewhere. It has to have a physical rotation value and a physical scale value. Even if it is zero, 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 it still has to have that value in existence within Unity. So the inspector panel in short terms is just a way of defining various different aspects of every single object within development. We have a navigation tab here. You may have that, you may not. We won't be using anything to do with navigation in this series. Basically, it's just artificial intelligence to a degree, that's all. So down the bottom, we have the project window, and this is where we can store all of our assets. Things like sounds, things like textures, things like models, materials, scripts, anything you can think of that you would create a game with would be considered an asset, and we'd be able to see it down here in this window. Next, we have the console. The console is a great way of seeing, for example, if you've created a script, you have an error, the game won't run. The console will help you find where that error is and you can track it down and hopefully fix it. Next, we have animation. Now, this is another tab that you may or may not have. It just depends on your Unity setup. If you do not have this animation tab, let's get this in place now. You can click these three little dots here and then you'll be able to click on add tab and then finally animation and it will bring up this tab right here. This is a way of creating simple animations inside Unity. It's not recommended to have big complex animations, for example characters 
um, developed inside Unity, they're usually created inside 3D modeling apps. So if you created a character in 3D Studio Max, you would create the animation there as well rather than in Unity. But that doesn't mean to say that you can't create animations in Unity because you can, and we will be doing in this series for whatever reason uh, a little later on. Uh, but it's just a simple way of doing it. And to be honest, they can be quite complex sometimes. You can create good animations. It just depends on your patience and skill, really. So that's pretty much all of the windows that we're going to be using within this series. And the great thing is we can actually move these around. If you're not happy with how it looks currently, the layout, you can move them around. So let's take this game view and let's place it over here with the inspector. Just because we could if we wanted to. So you can switch it around. Let's bring it back over here. And let's bring the hierarchy over here. Like that. So all I'm really doing there is holding the left mouse button down on whatever tab I want to move, moving it to where I want to move it to, and then letting go. We can also uncouple tabs from their places. So if we want to make the game tab its own individual object, we can just uncouple it and wait until it's a window that you can move around and then let go. And now it's its own window, nice and easy. So let's place this back here. And now what I'm thinking is because we're aiming, I think primarily for mobile devices, what we'll do is we will manipulate this a little more to be mobile shaped. So most games that you would find on your phone or mobile devices are in portrait mode. So we can bring this game view here and place it there. So now we have the game, scene and hierarchy. And we can expand these a little bit if we want to, like so. You can even bring this up or down, however you want to visualize it, I guess. So you can see here, I think this is a pretty decent look for how we're going for. I mean, I said earlier, this can be used for PC as well. I think realistically, everything we create in Unity is going to be for PC one way or another. Um, but everything you do here will be relevant to all devices. Speaking of devices, how do we make sure that we are porting it to the correct device? Well, if we go to file and if we go to build settings, we can see here we have all the supported devices currently. So most people develop for PC, Mac and Linux, some people develop for UWP, some people iOS, Android, whatever you want. Now the key to all of this is if you have a massive game, the earlier you switch platform, the quicker it will change over to that supported platform. Although in this case, it's not going to matter too much. If you have a massive open world game and you fully develop that, and it's, you know, it's massive, and then you try switching platform, it could take a while to switch over to that platform. Um, for now, I'm going to go with Android. If you want to go for something else, it's entirely up to you. Uh, but let's switch platform. It will take just a second to switch over because it is a very, very small project file right now. It shouldn't take much more than 20 seconds, I don't think. But like I say, you can switch platform at any point during development and you can always switch back at any point as well. There's no restriction on when you do that. It's just a case of remembering that if it's um, a large project, it could take longer than a considerably smaller project. So we've converted it now and you can see this little Unity icon represents what platform we're currently building for. In this case, Android. So once you've got your platform set, let's take a look at a couple of other things. So Unity is mainly object oriented, but that doesn't mean to say there isn't just as much coding because there really is. It, you can't really make a game without coding. Yes, I know there are ways, there are different things you can get, but to me, I've always considered cheating to be a little bit naughty. I, I prefer coding. I prefer learning. Yeah, it may be the harder, longer way sometimes, but at the end of it, you've learned a lot more than you would have if you've just got a program which makes the game for you. So because we're going to be dealing a lot with UI in this particular series, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a UI element that we're going to use in the next tutorial. So if we go to game object, you can see all the different objects that you'll be able to insert into Unity. As I said, because we're dealing with UI, this UI right here is going to be one 
that we'll deal with. So let's start by inserting an image. So click and you'll see a couple of things appear on the screen. Firstly, we'll see this big white square in the scene view and it'll also appear here in the game view. You'll notice at the moment this is appearing on the right hand side and this one's appearing on the left hand side. That means that we need to switch around how we're viewing this. So we're currently viewing this backwards. So if we were to pan our camera around with the right mouse button and then hold the middle mouse wheel and pan ourselves across and then pan ourselves around again with the right mouse button, we can see this is now our screen of what we're going to see. So this white line is the canvas and you'll see that that's appeared here as well as event system. We don't need to worry about event system just for now, but the canvas is the primary object we're going to be dealing with. The canvas is a way of storing everything UI wise inside Unity. So if we've got text appearing on screen, if we've got pictures appearing on screen, buttons, all that kind of thing, it will be inside the canvas. So that is our first object inside Unity. And if I click it, you can see that there are a couple of different components here. Again, we have a transform component because it needs to know where it is. We have a couple of others as well. So before we end this, let's figure out how we save the scene. Now, by default, Unity will present to you this, which is the default scene known as sample scene. And it's up to you how you want to deal with this. Let's go to File and we'll go to Save As and let's go into Scenes and we'll put this down as Quiz Scene and let's hit Save. So check at the top now that yours does indeed say Quiz Scene and then make sure you select the sample scene and let's hit Delete and it's gone for good. So the only scene we're now dealing with is quiz scene, which is this one right here. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to manipulate this UI a little more. We're going to add in a background and we're going to add in some text and probably some buttons as well. Like I say, it's going to be a lot of UI in this series. So that's what I want to kind of focus on first and foremost, get ourselves accustomed to how the UI looks. So until that next tutorial, Thanks very much for watching, guys.